Brief disclaimer, sweet boy. Please beat the game normally before using these programs. But don't be a little bit. Grinding sucks, especially for people with little time on their hands. With the DLC mere days away, the prospect of conquering the game anew to amass the necessary runes and items may feel like a watermelon collar to many. Lucky for you, little Cheeto, there's a way to quickly forge builds and acquire items at your leisure without resorting to spending money on rune selling sites or enduring the need to interact with other humans. A notion that I know may greatly appeal to you. The key lies in utilizing Cheat Engine to craft your Elden Ring builds in a mere 15 minutes and either play with them on PC or transfer them to PS5. However, I already hear you asking the dreaded question. But Ranny, won't I get banned for using Cheat Engine? Now listen to me, you little mouth breather. Would I suggest you do something that would get you banned? No. Of course not, silly. However, you do have to take some precautions in order to keep your account safe. And that's basically what we're going to do today. We will teach you the steps for safely backing up your save files using Cheat Engine, creating your characters offline, using them in online play and transferring them to PS5 if you need to do so. Roderica, lend me a hand with this. Uh, me? Do you see any other Rodericas here? Um, okay. First time using one of these computers here. Just read from the script, woman. You're gonna want to go to the video description and download this little folder called Files. Inside, you will find three files. The Hexington table, the TGA table, and a text file called steamapid.txt. You're going to copy that file and paste it in your game's main directory. If you don't know where that is, simply open your Steam, go to Library, find Elden Ring, right-click it, then select Manage, and then click on Browse Local Files. This will open a folder with another folder called Game. Inside this folder, you will paste the Steam App ID file. So far, so good. Next, find the Elden Ring.exe file and create a shortcut to your desktop. By doing this, booting the game with the shortcut will enable you to start the game offline and without booting easy anti-cheat. We need to do this in order to be able to open the cheat engine tables, otherwise the game will crash when attempting to do so. With our shortcut for the offline game created, we can now launch the game offline. But first, let's back up our save file. Safety first, Sean. If you type percentage app data percentage in the search bar of your Windows Explorer, it will redirect you to the roaming folder. Inside, there will be an Elden Ring folder containing the save files of all of your Steam accounts. Open the one you need and make a copy of this file, er0000.sl2. With our backup created, we can safely launch our game. When you boot the game like this, a message saying inappropriate activity detected will pop up. Don't worry, this is normal because the game is not detecting easy anti-cheat. Just click OK and move on. There's nothing to worry about. Start a new game, create your new character, and head to Limgrave's first step, Sight of Grace. In here, press the Alt key plus the Tab key on your keyboard, the one with the two pointy arrows to leave the game in the background. Open the Files folder and open the Hexington table. Click on the coloured button beneath the File tab and select the Elden Ring application. Click the Yes option and then click on the box of Enable down below. A list of options will appear, but for now we will focus on the green one. Give yourself items and runes. Select that option by checking the box, then the orange item jib, and then the green item jib. This will open a window interface with many different options to find the items you want or need. For example, if you want the Blasphemous Blade, simply click on Weapons, type the name in the search bar down below, and then click on Find. Select the weapon, apply any of the options down below if you need to, like how much reinforcement you want it to have, click the Gib button, and watch the magic happen. That's basically how you give yourself any item in the game. But it's not that simple. You gotta... um... Rani, could you take it from here? I'm afraid of screwing up. Remind me why I hired you. 
Like Little Red Riding Hood said, you have to know what you're doing when you're spawning your items. For example, don't try to be cheeky and spawn a blasphemous blade plus 25 because that will simply result in a bugged item. Having one of these in your inventory while playing online can and will get you banned. There are also items listed on the item jib that will cause an error simply by spawning them, such as the drawstring freezing grease or the roped freezing pots. If you spawn one of these by mistake, simply discard it like any other item and you'll be safe. So if you want to give yourself 600 copies of the same item and you're unsure if it'll return an error, simply spawn one and check. That should be enough. Regarding consumables, the ones I mentioned are the only two that we know of that cause issues. Regarding cut content though, like the ragged set, having it in your inventory won't get you banned. But just for safety, I'd probably avoid spawning it. When regarding items like pots or perfumes, be sure to spawn the containers first, otherwise the item can glitch out. Key items like crystal tears, memory stones and talisman pouches should be spawned in quantities that fit with how many you can get. Spawning any more won't return an error, it will merely give an in-game warning, but do it correctly just to be safe. Don't be a goober. Also, don't worry about obtaining more pouches in a natural way, like by defeating Margit, for example, as nothing bad will happen. Lastly, if you want to directly spawn a specific weapon with a specific infusion and a specific Ash of War, select the infusion you want from the list, then select an Ash of War for that weapon in the drop-down menu below, and then press the Jib button. It goes without saying that the Ash of War you select must match the weapon you chose, so no, you can't put Spinning Slash on a whip, and especially do not do it with somber weapons. That's all you need to know about items spawning for the moment. It's pretty simple and safe to do, and it will save you days upon days of mind-numbing grinding if all you want to do is play the game. There are some other neat options in the table, like for example obtaining all the gestures, Yippee! reviving bosses in case you want to practice a specific boss fight, giving yourself all wet blades so you can infuse your weapons with any element. Or in the TGA table, an option to unlock maps, sites of grace, wet blades, invasion regions and summon pools without actually visiting them first. Also, you can alter your stats with Cheat Engine, but I do not recommend it at all. Not even the Cheat Engine guys recommend it. So if you're going to do it, do not go online with this character. Very well, my little Penirigata. Hope you paid attention. Wow. Let's create a test character and see how that goes. We're giving ourselves the Bloodhound's Fang, the Radan Armor, Talisman Pouches, some little fun and useful pookies, the Flask of Wondrous Physic with some Crystal Tears, some other weapons, the item to invade, and some more items just to show what you can do with this tool. We also spawn ourselves some runes, unlock invasion areas in Limgrave, and level up after talking to the attention-starved one-eyed goober. Our little Kevin is now complete. Now we go online by opening the game normally, and as you can see, we can safely play with our quickly created character without any problems. Now we just need to teach you how to transfer your character to PS5 and you'll be ready to stab that DLC in the urethra, but wait! You do have the DLC, right? Oh, you're dancing for money on the streets just so you can buy it? Well, I think we can help you with that. No, we're not going to lend you money, but you're still in luck! because Instant Gaming has got you covered. Instant Gaming is a website with over 10 million satisfied customers who opted to turn their back on overinflated retail prices and focus on a better shopping experience. With 24-7 customer support and great Trustpilot reviews, Instant Gaming offers amazing discounts on all games, game cards and subscriptions for every platform on the market. It doesn't matter if you have a framed picture of Bill Gates or Gabe Newell in your basement wall, Instant Gaming does not That's discriminate. Wait, but wait, there's more. By clicking my special link in the description or pinned comment and simply creating an account, you'll participate in a free giveaway where the winner will get to choose a prize of their preference. So, who knows? Maybe you'll just win that DLC. <laughs> The winner will be chosen at random by the system at the end of the month, so don't waste your time. Big thanks to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video. And now I'll leave you with Stilovsky so he can explain to you how to transfer save files to PS5 
because we don't have one. Hello gamers, welcome. I am here to teach you how to move PC save file to PlayStation 5. But before we are going to start, I have something to announce. By no means I was forced to make this guide and I am without a doubt not held hostage and at the gunpoint by certain blue skinned individual. Get to work! So first of all, over here in this folder, we are going to have two we are going to have two files uh, and it is a save wizard for playstation 4 max and elden ring save editor elden ring save editor is available for free on the nexus mods and of course link going to be in the description when it comes to save wizard you kinda have to buy it and on top of that you actually need advanced mode which means that you're gonna have to buy 60 dollars version sadly this is a price for wanting to become a console peasant i'm sorry we don't know any better solution at the given moment so once you have these two applications installed and ready we have have to firstly move onto PlayStation. All right, now as we got onto the PlayStation, as you can see, I have here Elden Ring, but the PlayStation 4 version. It's very important to use this version of the game because otherwise you won't be able to move your save files onto the USB drive. Now when we have it clear, you have to go to the settings. In the settings, you go to the save data and game slash app settings. Now you are going to the save data PS4 and you choose upload or delete from console storage. So you choose that one and then copy to the USB drive. You check the game, in this case Elden Ring, and you just copy. Okay, it seems like everything copied and now we can quit PlayStation and get back onto the PC. All right, we are back onto the PC. Our USB drive is plugged in and now we open the save wizard our usb drive is supposed to be detected automatically and uh, yeah we just open elden ring here and this file sce sd memory is basically our save we click it with the left mouse button and then right mouse button to open the advanced mode Okay, after the short wait, we are going to see this type of window. So the next thing we have to do is to click export to file and... I swear to God, I'm gonna press charges. And we have to go on down there. We, we, we have to, we have to change the name of the file. PS5 underscore files one dot txt. And also let's save it to our folder called save transfer guide to make everything in one place. And if you are going to open this folder, yeah, it's looking like rubbish, but don't worry, everything is Gucci. Next thing that you have to do is to open save editor. And now look, you gotta click open, then you have to find your file in that folder of ours that I just prepared. You have essentially nothing, but if you are going to go here in the bottom right, corner you can change the file extension to txt and we have our thingy we double click it and as you can see this is actually my save file from playstation you have every single character here yeah with uh, their stats and everything and i am going to now click import character and then i gotta have to find my save files from the PC. We can do it by clicking on that window up there and type in percent updata percent. Oh, just like I explained. Shut up! Now we gotta have to find our Elden Ring folder and it is right here. Then another folder with bunch of numbers, which is essentially our Steam ID. And then you are going to have this file called ER bunch of zeros and dot esl2 you click it and look at that we have importer here and only waifu told me that i will know which character i supposed to move and i think it's this one i'm actually pretty sure it's this one well we're gonna exchange it with profit base character because profit starting class is dog shit now i clicked import already and look what happened here you actually didn't have that character now you do we can quit importer and then we are going to simply uh, click the save button. And this save button we have to save onto that 
txt file. So we are doing the thing again. We are using saves as type as txt. Then we got our uh, PS5 files one. For the sake of safety and having the backup, I'm going to change it to two. And now I can quit the save editor. As you can see, I have the previous PS5 save file and the new one. And this is the save file that we're gonna now import. I didn't close the advanced mode that we had before, like our save wizard advanced mode, because I knew that I'm gonna be working on it. And well, essentially, if you did close your stuff, then just reopen it. No biggie. I'm going to click import file and then choose PS5 underscore files underscore two after like three seconds i will be able to click apply do that i click yes i am going to wait a second and my save file on my usb is going to be modified okay we got the information that modification successfully applied and that's about it we can close everything and we can move our save file back onto playstation all right we're back let's move to the settings again we are going to the save data we are going to the save data ps4 and now we choose option copy or delete from usb drive and then we choose elden wrong copy and it's gonna go through onto our console just in a few seconds we are going to be able to open the game we're supposed to have our kevin onto playstation okay we logged in onto the online servers and here is kevin Sometimes you might fall beneath the map, but it's not biggie. We are on PlayStation, on this beautiful creature that you know very, very well from Waifu's videos. And uh, yeah, we can do gaming on PlayStation with use of our PC character. Very cool. <laughs>